Hey Valley Middle, welcome back to another math lesson. Today we're going to look at how you convert customary units of measure. That sounds complicated, but once I start explaining it, I think it'll be pretty easy to understand what we need to do. Uh, all right, our trivia question tonight is what is the altitude of Denver? In other words, how many feet above sea level is the city? I'll give you a hint. Its nickname is the Mile High City, and by the end of this lesson you should be able to tell me how many feet above sea level Denver is. All right, tonight's target officially is 6.2a. I can convert one customary unit of measurement to another using a chart. All right, here's our problem of the day. John buys a liquor rope that's one yard long. He wants to split it in three ways. How long will each piece be? Well, there's a couple of different ways to solve that using what we know about customary units of measure. We know that one yard is three feet, so we could just say that each child is going to get one foot of licorice. We also know that one yard is 36 inches. So each piece will be 12 inches long. You could divide it up that way. One foot and 12 inches, you know, that's a unit of measure there. They're exactly the same, so it doesn't really matter which answer you would say. Uh, tonight, as we go through these problems, I'd like you to remember that you are always going to have the chart in front of you. Uh, and I've got the chart right here of all of them that you should know. I've taken and put in a star next to the ones that people, m most of the time, people don't know them by heart. So the ones that aren't starred are the ones that are really should be committed to memory. One foot is 12 inches, a yard is 3 feet, a year is 365 days, a day is 24 hours, one hour is 60 minutes, one minute is 60 seconds, a pound is 16 ounces, a ton is 2,000 pounds, and a gallon is 4 quarts. The others are bonus and uh, oftentimes people will have to consult a chart just like the one I gave you there to figure it out. Um, each of these relationships that I've shown you here is written as a ratio or can be written as a ratio like a unit rate. A unit ratio is one in which the denominator is one unit. Look at three feet and one yard. They're the same. 2,000 pounds and one ton. Those things are the same. Uh, and when you solve these, you can use unit ratios to multiply and divide. Um, you can use common sense or reasoning or a combination of both. I generally just use reasoning to work my way through it, especially when I've got that chart right there. All right, let's take a look at a couple of problems tonight. I'd like you to convert 20 feet to inches. I'm just going to have you start off by doing it, doing a problem instead of me showing you how. Go ahead, I'll uncover the chart there. Give it a shot. All right, let's see how you did. Well, we know that 12 inches is one foot, so 12 inches times 20 feet would be 240 inches. Not tough, huh? Uh, I thought you could handle that one. Here's another one I'd like you to take a look at. This one here involves uh, capacity in ounces. Clarence mixes one quarter cup of fertilizer with soil before planting each bulb. How many ounces of fertilizer does he plant per bulb? So to look at uh, down here in the cups and the ounces and see if you can figure that one out. Go ahead. All right. We know that eight ounces is one cup because that's right off the chart over here. So a quarter cup is going to be two ounces. One cup is eight ounces. A fourth of that, if you divide that by four, is two ounces. I put down here a note that I often use the calculator, and knowing that a quarter is 0.25, I could have taken those eight ounces times 0.25 and gotten two. Or I could have divided, eight divided by four and gotten two. So just a number of ways. Um, usually what I think about, the first thing I think about is my number going to be larger or smaller. If I know that there are eight ounces in one cup, I know that a quarter of a cup is going to be smaller than eight right? Because it's not a full one. Okay. Uh, here are three quick problems. I think I'll just cover them back up so you can take a look. See if you can solve these three problems and I'll uncover your chart as well. Go ahead. All right. Let's see how you did. 36 yards is how many feet? Well, there's three feet in a yard, so three feet times the 36 yards would equal 108 feet. Uh, three quarters of a ton, that's in blue. 
3 quarters of a ton. I know that 3 quarters equals 0.75, so if I use my calculator, which is hidden over here, and I take 0.75 times 2,000, it's not a whole ton, right? It's a fraction of it, so it's going to be less than 2,000. It's 1,500 pounds, okay? And let's see, 1.5 quarts equals how many pints? Well, 1 quart is 2 pints. A half a quart is 1 pint, so 1 and a half quarts would be 3 pints. I bet you you've got this one here correct, and I bet you you got that one right. Did you get this one? All right. Sometimes addition I use, sometimes straight multiplication. Other times, I have to use a little more reasoning and think about fractions and how they uh, equate to decimals. All right. I'm going to skip to this problem right here. Why don't you try completing these problems right here. Go ahead. All right. Let's see how you did. First one, D. Well, 2,640 feet equals how many miles? Well, there's 2,640 uh, 2, feet divided by 5,280 feet in a mile gives you one half. You also could have looked at that and said, well, this times 2 is going to be a mile, so this must be a half a mile. A couple of different ways to solve that one. Two pints, I'm sorry, five pints equals how many quarts? Well, I know that two pints is one quart, so five pints is going to be two and a half quarts. And I've got my answers in blue here. 100 ounces. Well, there's 100 ounces, and there's 16 ounces in a pound, so if I take 100 and I divide that by 16 on my calculator, I'm going to get 6.25 pounds. 76 cups is how many gallons? Well, I use my chart over here that there's 8 ounces in a cup, and 128 divided by 8, I figured out that there's 16 cups in a gallon, so 76 cups divided by 16 cups in a gallon it would give me 4.75 gallons. How much? Three cups is how many pints? Well, two cups is one pint, so that's going to be one and a half pints. That was pretty simple. And the last one, 18 inches is how many feet? Again, I know that 12 inches is one foot, so that is going to be one and a half feet. You kind of got to keep on your toes as you work through these, don't you? You do. All right. Here's the, your ticket to the show. How many quarts are there in 15 gallons? And how many seconds are in an hour? Those are pretty straightforward. See if you can solve it. I'm going to give you a second to write that down. I'm going to scroll back here and pause it so you can take a look at that chart for a minute. All right. Let's get to the ticket of the show. Oops, ticket and trivia question. Do you remember how many feet are in a mile? Mile High City, Denver, it's 5,280 feet above sea level, making it one of the ma highest major cities in the United States. Today is football, today is uh, Super Bowl Sunday as I'm making this. You already know who won the game by the time you watch this. I still don't. Uh, I started thinking, does the height of a city affect a player's ability to kick a football or hit a baseball? It does. As a matter of fact, uh, according to Brian Burke, he did some scientific research. He says that temperature also affects it. So um, when it's colder out, the air is more dense if it's 30 degrees and a ball will travel about five yards further, a kick will. And he said when it comes to altitude, there's Denver, then there's everywhere else. And he did, he took and did some charts and some explanation of this. But basically what it comes down to is that if you're in Denver, the ball is going to kick on average, it's going to go about five yards further down here at the bottom. So if it's cold, that's five yards, 30 degrees or below, and it's in Denver, that's another five yards, you're going to be able to kick about 10 yards further. Um, I actually read through the uh, research and he did a pretty good job of making sure he was fair about it. So, all right, thanks for listening. Have a good evening.